Okay, we got lots of cool stuff happening. I decided to pinch some suckers off of most of the tomato varieties. Uh, I cut their stem at an angle, dipped it in rooting hormone, tapped off the excess, and put it put them in moist soil. In about a week, they should be uh, good to go on their own, develop enough roots that they really won't need to be babied. All right. I'm going to take you out to the garden to show you what's been going on out there. I'm probably going to take the camera with me in about an hour and go down to the blackberry patch. I've already collected a gallon and a half of the Ziploc bags and froze the blackberries. The lychee tomato, this is the first one that got started. I have a the second round and then I put some more seeds in the pots over here and as you can see I've got some more pots that I've been transplanting I'll get ready to fill those up and start more seeds and where is the third round of lychee he came up they might be on the deck on the rail but we got sprouting going on transplanting going on pollination seed collection and uh, harvesting, so it's quite hectic here. Big time growth on the ginger root, watermelons transplanted early. I've talked to you before about this. Watermelon don't really like to be moved, and I waited a bit long into their growth to do it. You know, if they have two or four leaves and you don't disturb the root base, you could get away with it quite easily if you're delicate. So there's a cage over this for multiple reasons because of the dog, dogs tearing things up, but also because I wanted to provide the watermelon some shade from the sun until they got their roots in. And that was about three days and they are showing a little signs of it, but they're coming back nicely. The two on the right have been transplanted and the difference between the ones on the left that had not been moved strawberry pots in their positions and already the runners are starting to reach the ground and they'll take root. So this will be part of a permanent strawberry bed. Incredible growth on that giant golden amaranth back there. And here we have some color from the flowers starting to show up. The marigolds, lettuce uh, starting to get tall so I'll be eating that. The, the shading experiment is just isn't working as I had hoped. But the experiment out back, it's too early to tell, so we'll see how that goes. Lots and lots of flowering going on on the Blue Lake beans. So in a very short amount of time, beans are heavy producers, providing you pick them young and pick them often. Uh, Around mid-season, I'll, I'll uh, eyeball this patch and pick the, the best of the plants, and that'll be my seed babies. Peas have totally, uh, they just can't handle the heat. Wasn't concerned about getting seed stock from these or eating too many of them. I just wanted to see what I could get away with. We actually did have quite a bit in the salads and see even young pods here. So I'll let these, uh, I'll pick the young pods and the ones that are starting to fill out nicely, I'll let those go, see if they get to maturity. Here's one that's, that's mature and that will produce a uh, viable seed. And then I'll use this area, I'll amend this area very heavily and use this for the next round of tomatoes. But I also have concern about the tomatoes here because as I, as I stated in an earlier video, tomatoes have a hard time with uh, high nighttime temperatures. And you know, we're in the 70s for a lot of nights and they just don't set fruit. We'll see how it goes. All right, here we are. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, these guys, these vining plants, they just really, really uh, take off very quickly, especially with a couple days of rain that we've had here. Uh, three days ago, he was barely out of the pot, 
and now just climbing all over. This is the perfect opportunity. I had cleared this of everything and wanted it to be my walkway into the garden area, this particular garden area, and it's been taken over by cleavers. And cleavers is very, very beautiful and delicate. It starts out like a little star shaped. And this has a lot of medicinal properties. If you're lucky enough to see this coming up in your flower or garden beds, let some of it go. You might need it. Look up on the internet while you still have it up and running of uh, all of the wonderful properties to this gorgeous plant. Nice growth on the Love Lies Bleeding Amaranth. Squash, my one squash down here got annihilated by puppies. That Samson, uh, he's just eating broccoli, Swiss chard, asparagus tops, um, and just crushing things. So I'm probably going to be forced to uh, put way more fencing up than what I had anticipated. Crazy uh, production on these early Russians. I highly recommend this variety. Um, it's my first year with it, but now that I've actually seen it in action and tasted it, uh, it's, it's just wonderful. Pick them young, pick them often, but most likely because of the growth on those lemon apples back there, I am going to let what I have on these vines go to seed. And as I've talked about before, uh, with uh, many plants, once they get to maturity on the vine, it signals to the plant that it's done its job and it no longer will produce as much or, or sometimes it just stops production because it has fulfilled its purpose which is procreation for the next generation. So mad amount of flowers, hand pollinating. I have not lost uh, one cucumber to lack of pollination. And it will literally uh, break my heart to have to pull these up to keep the seed stock pure. I might let them go for a little while and, and, and see what happens with the lemon apples. Fabulously filling out basil plants, both the sweet and the um, cinnamon. So here we have, these are the, uh, the Hopi squash. Some in pots some in the ground and I'm going to go around back. I was doing my pollination in the morning and decided to go grab the camera so you guys could really see this. This male flower has been stripped back of its petals and I ate its petals. Squash, pumpkin, they're in the squash families. Um, the flowers are edible. The Mexicans make a, a squash soup and Italians love to make an egg wash and fry them. Delicious. Just, it was a treat. Lightly salted and uh, even my children love them. So the male is very easily identifiable on a squash as well as the female. So here we have a, a squash starting. Now I anticipate that this one is going to abort because I didn't have any male flowers when that female flower was receptible to pollination. I'm quite sure that uh, I didn't have pollinators coming in that could by chance uh, have carried pollen from another gardener's area. And here we have the female. And same thing with the cucumber. You have your male and you could see, unlike with the uh, cucumber, you could actually see the flex of of pollen and you just take that and go in there and rub it all over the inside and outside and there are actually lots of ants in there and that's to ensure that it's pollinated. Now if you want to make sure that you are the only one doing this you take this flower and you close it and it's kind of gummy when you rupture it. 
and sometimes these will stick closed like that for you no problem sometimes they'll want to pop back open and with a little piece of masking tape painters tape whatever kind of tape just a small little piece you wrap it around there I guess if you wanted to you could even tie a piece of uh, string or twine German foxtail millet taking off which I'm actually going to have to move my uh, uh, Grindelia this is a medicinal herb there's some of them plopped in about here and I'll show you my absolute complete and total failure I'm quite sure that the rice sprouts got cooked we hit the hundred degree mark and those rice were ready to take off they had their you know they germinate it but no growth so I'm pretty sure it got too hot in there I'm gonna wait until fall and I'm going to try this again South Carolina is actually I think it's the largest um, rice producer in the United States of all the states this I am quite sure that this is a wild tobacco variety that just happened here so I'm gonna let it go and see what happens and the direct sow on the Cal Wonder Bell Peppers uh, actually they came up so I'm going to have a lot of those because I started some in pots uh, not knowing if the direct sow was going to work <laughs> fabulous arugula bed and we're eating where you know I'm pinching the leaf off of the outside plants uh, here and there for salads you can get away with a lot of the leafy greens <laughs> with taking an outside leaf or two off of each one of the plants and it won't harm seed production. But when it comes time for seed production, all of these smaller plants around the outside edge will be removed. Excellent growth on the Sensations Mixed Color tobacco. Just beautiful. Thrilled with that. Likewise with the Love Lies Bleeding amaranth um, I told you when we started this it was going to be extremely dramatic growth and I probably I, I may have mentioned it that the uh, the leaves of the young amaranth are also edible but what you're really looking for is those dry seed heads and it provides a vegetarian diet with the protein that you're going to need so well, I'll let you know how the, the uh, cloning goes on the tomatoes. We have the strawberry runners taking hold here and black eggplant all over coming here. The dogs ruined the uh, second year cow wonders up front, but the albino bullnose is flowering and nice fruit will be happening very, very quickly here. Runners are taking onto their poles with the winged bean. I know you're all going to love to see this winged bean. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous specimen. Okra looking really good. And the kohlrabi is actually is starting to bulb. So I might not get the whole patch to bulb up for me, but I'll definitely get to enjoy tasting it this year. And I'll start that again come, come fall. Radish still happening. It's in a shady spot and that's still going on pretty good. And I'll give you another glimpse at the gorgeous endive flowers. The color and they're just, I, I just think they're absolutely spectacular to see in the garden. But lots of baby tomatoes started everywhere. So I'm pretty happy with that. Can't wait to eat them. And this is just gorgeous and out of control. We've actually been been eating some of this. Good flavor. Nice dark greens uh, that have some, you know, tooth to it where you actually feel like you're chewing it. And some very, very delicate greens. I've been eating this raw and uh, blanching it. 
So all in all, it's good. I'm going to shut down and uh, get on the ride and take you to the, the insane blackberry patch. All right, arrivederci.